much for joining me in this daily vocal workout video. My name is Eve Williams and I've been a singing coach since 2005. I'm also an internationally touring singer and recording artist. So I'm hoping to help you keep your voice fit during lockdown. Now, you might have noticed that the way that you're using your voice has changed during lockdown. Maybe you're isolating on your own and you're actually not speaking that much. Or maybe you're working really hard from home and you're on Zoom calls all day, so you're using your voice a lot more than normal. Whatever the case is for you personally, I'm going to give you some exercises here that will help your voice for where it is now. Now, before we start, I want you to remember that singing is a form of physical activity. And like any other form of physical activity, if you don't practice good technique, you can sustain an injury. So there's something I want you to consider before you start. Do you have clear tone? When you speak, is your voice clear? If there's air coming out like this, and it's not just voice, but there's some air as well, that would be a sign that something in the mechanism of your voice is stopping your vocal folds from coming together. So if you do not have clear tone, if your voice is breathy or hoarse, don't do this video and don't do any vocal training until you've consulted a doctor about it. So I do have to start by saying that. Okay, so I'm going to start with an exercise that will take your voice through its entire range of movement. Probably the most important exercise for you to do every day and it's called the siren. So the first thing I want you to do is just say sing. Say that after me. Sing. Then ing. See how that slightly puts your voice into your nose? Let's do that again. Ing. Then just move your voice up and down through its range of movement to that ing sound. So it's like this. Ing. Now don't copy my range. Pause this video and take your voice through its own range of movement. Okay, let's try that one more time. Now, any note that you can hum through your nose like that, you can sing. So if I can go, I can do this. Don't do that, by the way, because it might really annoy your neighbors. Um, so when I'm working with people's voices and they're terrified of say an E or an F, but when they're sirening, they get right the way up above topsy. I know that that's psychological rather than physical. This exercise is also a great indicator of the health of your voice. Because if your voice wasn't healthy, if you were a bit dehydrated or you had a bit of a cold coming on, your voice wouldn't move smoothly up and down. There would be cracks and bumps. So if when you do this exercise, there are some cracks and bumps, try just having a glass of water, leaving it a couple of minutes and trying again. Okay. Great. So the next exercise we're going to do is still working on range, but it's doing it a little bit more slowly than the siren exercise does it. So just let me get behind my keyboard here. Now it can be time consuming if you've got quite a large range to stretch it with this exercise, but it's something worth doing every day. So what I want to do now is sliding fifths. So we're going to sing uh, and we're not going to sing uh, actually I'm going to start that with a big yeah sound to make it easier and we're going to slide up and slide back down yeah and one up yeah and one up yeah now as you get higher let your chin drop at the top note just to let that sound ring out because we don't want any constriction to set in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now drop out of this exercise where whenever you feel you've gone as far as you want to go. Now we can go up in fairly big intervals of a fifth, 
but you can actually injure your voice worse through pushing it too low than too high. You can distend your larynx, which is a bit like spraining it. That would keep you from speaking for a couple of weeks. So we're going to go down to your lower register in very small steps, semitones and tones. So we're just going to sing this. Sing, 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 sing. Repeat that after me. Sing, 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 sing. And one down. Sing, 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 sing. 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 Now, the point to stop, keep going as low as you want to. But when your voice starts to sound a little bit low and rumbly, when it goes into what's called vocal fry, where it's kind of like this, stop there. Don't push it beyond that. Because as I say, you can injure your voice through pushing it too low. So that exercise might take some time. I would say you don't need to do that every day, but doing it about three times a week is a very good thing to do. And take it through your own comfortable range. Now you'll notice when we go up, we always come back down again. So we're never leaving the voice in either the low exercise where when we go down, we come back up again. We're never leaving the voice right at the edge. And one thing that I would recommend that you not do is to sing scales, to just go, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, because what inevitably happens is, once you get to the top of your voice, or the bottom, you'll always try and push it one more step than it actually wants to go, and that's how damage can be done. So we're always returning the voice to somewhere comfortable after we've given it a big stretch. Okay. So speaking of big stretches, I'm now going to do some posture exercises because of course posture is incredibly important in singing. So I'd like you to find a free bit of wall or a door like I have here and lean against it. Bend your knees to support your back, keep them nice and soft and your feet should be about, I don't know, about a foot away from the door. So what we're gonna do is pretend that there is some sellotape behind your head and that sellotape is being peeled off the door or the wall. So your head is being peeled off, your neck, your upper spine, your mid spine, your lower spine. And when you get to the bottom, just hang like a rag doll. Take a deep breath into your ribcage. And then stack your spine, vertebra by vertebra, back onto the wall, taking care not to hit your head at the top, then stand up, shake it out. That should feel really nice. It's like, you know, you've been hung on a coat hanger nearly, and this is a really good posture for singing. Open space around here, space between ear and shoulder. Do you notice how when I raise my shoulders, my voice is pinched? We want to keep a big space here. And the core muscles of the body, the big muscles, taking the strain. Breathing. No matter how long you've been singing for, we all need to work on our support because breath is here, sound is here. If breath goes down, sound will go down. Doesn't matter how good your ear is, you will go out of pitch without the right support. And also you'll get exhausted without the right support. And that kind of promise me, you'll wait for me, gaspy singing with short, sharp breaths up here just doesn't sound that good. Now you may have heard the phrase sing from your diaphragm used back in the day, but unfortunately some people misinterpreted this as meaning squeeze in your stomach. Don't squeeze in your stomach, basically, because what happens when you squeeze a tube? The contents of that tube come back up, and many an opera singer's career in the 50s and 60s was ended by acid reflux, when the acid from their stomach hit their vocal folds, which can be a bad injury to your voice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn to breathe here. Intercostal basically means between the ribs. So I'm going to use a stretch band. You can also use a scarf, a cardigan, anything that you can tie around your rib cage. So it's not going around your waist and it's not going under your armpits, it's somewhere in between. So when I breathe in, the band should move outwards, but you're not supposed to do this. Again, we want to maintain that space here, shoulders should stay down. So breathe in and breathe out. And breathe in and breathe out. Now, I'm going to sing something with this kind of breathing. I would like you to count how many times I breathe to sing this. So, 
What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor early in the morning? Could you count? Once at the start, you will now do the same singing along with me. But should you need to breathe, please breathe, because the point of the exercise is not to turn purple and um, keel over. So I'm going to give us a beat and then join in with me. One, two, three, four. What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor early in the morning? Now, did you have some breath left at the end of that or did that take you right to the end of your breath? For all of you watching this, the answer will be slightly different. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to slow it down. So that will make it more difficult. When you need to breathe, breathe. The point of the exercise, as I say, is not to go... Bleh. Okay, so deep breath in. What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? What will we do with the drunken sailor? <sighs> I got about three out of four lines through that exercise. But can you see how if you did that every day, you would be challenging your lung capacity? which at the moment when we're maybe not as active as we once were is a good thing. So if you use a metronome when you start at say 110 BPM, sing it quite fast, and then over the space of a week, aim for about 75 BPM. Now you're not gonna achieve that in one session. I've just learned that I'm gonna have to go back and do it again, but it is a really useful thing to do. And this breathing exercise with a band tied around your ribcage, you can do that while you're watching TV. You know, you can do that while you're hoovering. You don't have to block out time to do that. But if you use this intercostal lateral breathing, if you really practice that, muscle memory will kick in. And at some point, that's naturally how you're going to breathe when you go to sing. Now I'm going to look at safe projection, what they call anchoring. So I'm going to get you to just stand in a nice neutral posture and count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to count to eight again, but when you get to four, I would like you to pull your shoulder blades together, move your arms back, and wait till you hear what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do you see how the volume was naturally turned up? I did nothing in my voice to cause that to happen. That was what they call arm anchoring. Freddie Mercury was a big fan of arm anchoring and it's also a classical technique. So let's try that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's try it with a note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. Now, the other way of achieving safe projection is what we call twang. So, could you just say for me, yeah, 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 the horrid Henry chant? Be careful who you practice this in front of. Don't want to accidentally insult anyone. Do you see when I add that nasal twang to my voice, how suddenly my voice carries? It's much louder, but I'm not shouting, I'm not being aggressive, and I'm not forcing my voice. Let's do that one more time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you have a muscle in your voice called your aryepiglottic sphincter muscle. Don't expect you to remember that. Singers call it the twanger. And what happens when you make that twang sound and you contract that muscle is that your larynx, which is normally one tube, becomes two concentric tubes. So the sound is much more robust. You can actually find videos on YouTube of people using the twang under laryngoscopy and you can see that every structure of the voice moves in to protect the vocal folds. This is a core component of Country music, stumble out of bed and I tumble to the kitchen. Um, it's used in music theatre quite a lot. No, I'm no one's wife, but oh, I love my life. Very twangy. It's also a core component of classical singing. Because if you're singing in the Royal Albert Hall with 103 people in the symphony orchestra behind you all playing and a huge concert hall in front of you full of soft furnishings and people, and you're not allowed to use a microphone because that's bad form in classical music, how are you going to create the volume for your voice to carry? And although twang isn't all there is to that, it's a core component. So if you listen to classical singing, 
you will hear twang. I can feel the twang in my voice when I do that. So we're going to do a little five note scale to twang now because twang is an important technique to master. So I just want you to say yeah or that yeah sound and we're going to use that sound to little five note scales so it's going to sound like this. And one up. And just drop out when you need to. your lower, middle and upper register to create a consistent sound between those registers, but only if it's appropriate to the piece that you're singing. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our daily warm-ups here. It's very important to cool down your voice, mostly when I'm working with singers who've had sustained damage to their voices because they haven't learned to do that or they have an awful lot of tension here. We never want to leave your voice with the slight possibility of tension. So we're going to talk about something called retraction. Retraction is the opposite of constriction. Constriction is this, when your voice is very tight. That tends to happen especially to women between E and F at the break in the passaggio before you go into the high register. But if you allow that feeling of tightness to persist there, it will eventually affect the whole of your voice and over time constriction can lead to nodules and various problems with the voice. Some people's voices can take constriction, the likes of Rod Stewart for example, Bono, that gravelly sound is basically constriction but unless you do it purposefully and you really know what you're doing, best avoid it. So let's do an exercise for retraction which is to create an open free space in your voice and every time you sing you want to have that feeling of open free space. This exercise is called the Darth Vader and it goes like this. And that's all there is to it. Now, let me demonstrate a principle. Raise your shoulders, drop them. Raise your shoulders, drop them. If you want to loosen a muscle, you tighten it first. So we use the Darth Vader to do that in the voice. Let's try that one more time. And I like to do this with my hands because it gives me a visual image of what I'm trying to do with my voice. Now do it with your eyes closed and feel that space opening up when you let your voice go. So this feeling of open space, that's the feeling that you want to maintain when you're singing, whatever you might go on to sing today. So final exercise, cool down exercise, it just goes like this. So if you're recording today, if you're singing for extended periods of time today, do that little exercise afterwards and let's do that one more time. The word is just creak and then a big hard K at the end. Creak. And I don't know if you can see my voice tightening and listening when I do that. Practice that a couple of times because that's a really important one. So I hope that you've enjoyed your vocal workout today. If you have any questions or you would like some feedback on your singing, you'd like me to hear you, you can contact me at info at evewilliamsmusic.com. That will be in the description for this video. I've got a playlist on YouTube, various singing exercises, and a couple of courses online that you can access via my website, which I'll link to. But I'm always pleased to hear voices and to give advice on voices. So Please don't feel shy about sending things through to me. I, I really do love to hear people. So stay well during this crisis and keep singing.